I read an interesting book uh, recently called The Singularity is Near by uh, inventor Ray Kurzweil. Kurzweil is responsible for inventing the um, flatbed scanner and he invented a device that can read the words on a page and say them aloud so a blind person can uh, hear what the words are. Um, he's got about 40 patents in his name and he also takes a look at trends that have happened in the past and tries to extrapolate those out into what the future might be. And he did that with inventions as well. Um, he took a look at Moore's Law, which says that every 18 months, I believe, they can squeeze twice the amount of uh, transistors onto a microchip. So the computing power can essentially double every 18 months. There's also correlates to that. Currently, the, uh, the amount of bandwidth on a network is being doubled um, every, every between 11 to 18 months as well. Um, and just, he took a look at most of the progress that's being made in technology and it has to be happening, and it tends to happen on an exponential curve. So therefore, um, as time goes on and progress keeps doubling all the time, it grows into a massively huge amount of uh, innovation and progress that's made in a relatively short amount of time. In a way, it's almost like compound interest. Um, you could start with a penny and get a billion if uh, you have the right amount of compounding going on. Well, we see that with technology as well. He makes the point that um, it's interesting, even the universe itself has a sense of progression. Um, you know, there were early life forms, and then later on we had DNA, and then after that we moved up from simple celled organisms to more complex organisms like human beings. And then from there it went to mechanical um, innovation. We had the wheel and fire, eventually we get the space shuttle and the internet. Uh, it's his estimation that in time we'll have the ability to reverse scan our brains and we'll be able to recreate our personalities uh, electronically and be able to upload our minds into a computer so you could back up your mind file so if your body were destroyed um, your mind would still be able to survive now you know he, he comes from a materialist standpoint and uh, tends not to be you know he's not a Christian and I don't I don't believe he's a practicing Jew so he doesn't really focus as much on this notion of like the soul or anything like that um, you know his his um, thesis is that we are basically a pattern and he said he believes that if we slowly replace parts of our organic body with uh, mechanical parts until we feel like all of our mind is is us yet it's mechanical we've essentially been able to transfer ourselves over into a human slash machine but that will also give us immortality um, he believes that um, the nanobots that we have now with the technology the way it's working eventually we'll have nanobots that are so effective this little tiny blood cell sized machines that will cure autoimmune diseases they will cure cancer and most of the other diseases that we have. And he, you know, he talks about some of the fears that people have about these things and that we'll have to work on um, solutions if, pe if the wrong technology gets into the wrong people's hands. Kind of like we have antivirus software now, we'll have to have anti-nanobot technology to stop um, harmful viruses and things that might be engineered by terrorists. He also believes that in 2029 we will have computers that will be so much like human beings that uh, we won't be able to tell the difference between them and uh, between speaking with them and speaking with a human. Um, he believes that the early computers, artificial intelligences, will be kind of like a regular human but a very stupid human. But as time goes on, the, the computers will be a lot smarter than we are, and they'll be able to create themselves and, and develop their own 
um, technology and solve even more problems. Uh, an interesting thing that he also talks about is um, how you know there are, it, it will be about 2045, and by that time you, the computers will have surpassed human beings and in intelligence and uh, start to really create their own uh, further computers. But he doesn't believe that's going to be a problem as well because we'll be so assimilated with the computers in terms of like having our minds hooked up to like virtual reality and uploading our minds into computers and our damaged organs being replaced by machines that they'll be assimilated with us. So it's unlikely there's going to be this competition between humans and computers like you see like in the Terminator movies. Um, he makes interesting points about how a lot of the economy has become, before it used to be physical and mechanical, um, a lot of the jobs were industrial and just creating things. But now a lot of the work that's being done because of technology uh, is mental work and information processing. So engineering jobs, uh, intellectual property kinds of jobs, these are the kind of things that are going to represent our future. Um, and I can see where he's coming from. If you think about it in the past, how technology has been disruptive. I mean, just look at how a car replaced like the horse and, and put the blacksmiths out of work. Um, you know, and then when you move up from there, you see how the internet in some ways is reducing the need for some people to travel as much as they did. And so it's gonna make it so pe less people will need cars. I think in the future it's going to be a difficult time for those that have a hard time embracing technology, but even with children that you see now growing up that are used to having computers in their lives, it's a lot less uh, problematic for them. Uh, I think they'll just be very used to um, dealing with technology and, and everything, so it won't be that big of a deal. Um, one thing that's interesting about it too is, is I, you know, I think about the digital divide and the cost that it's going to be for the poor to not be able to uh, embrace these technologies. But, uh, you know, when you think about it now, even if you're poor, if you go to Goodwill, you can get like an older computer for like 20 bucks. And some of the computers they have there are like Pentium 4s and stuff that people are discarding. And with a Pentium 4, you can still go online and, and do quite a bit with it. Um, and it's interesting because Kurzweil said that when he was in college in the 60s, uh, at MIT they had eleven million dollar computer and it was as big as a room and now we have um, compu it, computers that are in a person's pocket like with a smartphone that's a thousand times more powerful in terms of processing and a million times less expensive so as time goes on the um, cost for technology goes down dramatically um, even in my own life I've seen how camcorders, uh, have the price of those has, has really changed. I mean, it used to be that it was thousands of dollars for one of the early camcorders and the quality was not very good. And you look now and your iPod or iPad can take video that is 720p resolution, high definition, and store it. And the quality is much higher than what you could get before and it's just kind of something that you take for granted. Uh, it's a big change. And all of computing is, is really doing that as well. So we see how this technology becomes more pervasive throughout society in, in a very substantial way. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, technology is something that um, I, I don't think we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop it. It seems like it keeps moving on uh, despite what we want to do, um, what's going to happen in, in my lifetime, I really don't know. Um, just to see the advances that have already been made within the last five years even is really breathtaking. I think that an important point that Kurzweil makes is that human beings are used to thinking in a linear way, meaning you think step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, 
but in an exponential you're thinking two, you know, two times two is four, you know, and and sixteen, thirty-two, you know, you're just you're getting like these numbers increasing at a much higher rate and and uh, the technology leads to the creating of other technology and when you have that you're going to have gains that are hard for us to even conceive of. So anyway, if you're interested in learning more about what Kurzweil has to say, I'm including some links in my at the bottom of my blog here so you, so you can take a look. He's got some YouTube videos. There was also a movie done, a uh, documentary done about him called Transcendent Man and it came out in March of 2011 I believe and uh, it's available I think on iTunes as well and so you might want to check it out. It was, it was a fascinating watch and you may not agree with what he has to say about what the future is. Maybe you feel he's being too optimistic but whatever the case it's fascinating stuff and he makes a good argument and it's very positive and makes you feel good about the future uh, whichever way um, you may feel about it, I think.